Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, just a couple of comments from me, really, to begin with, and then I'll hand over to Paul to, to say a word or two, and then a few questions either here or um, individually. But absolutely delighted um, from the club's perspective to welcome Paul uh, as our new head coach. Um, as I said in the comments on Friday, we are going back to one single head coach in charge of professional cricket. So Paul is, is taking total charge of um, professional men's cricket here um, and will be uh, responsible for all recruitment decisions and coaching decisions for the organisation. So that's something that we've been looking at for a little while. Um, we had the two split coach roles with, with Ian and James, um, and I'd like to thank them for the, the work that they've put in through the last two or three years, which has not been easy through COVID. Um, obviously after Dizzy left to go back to Australia, and as everybody's aware, you know, we, we've, we made some decisions around the playing squad, and we've got a very young squad um, and I'd really like to thank those guys for putting in the groundwork to develop where we've got to. But we feel now is absolutely the right time to go back to one head coach controlling everything at the top of the club in terms of men's professional cricket. And with that in mind, we're obviously delighted to have Paul here with his vast experience of, of the game, both domestically and internationally. Um, so really excited really looking forward to getting started uh, into next season with the squad of players as i think everybody knows where they are there's a lot of young talent young exciting players um obviously with pajara and seals coming at the start of next season there's a real i think anticipation already despite it being the middle of december or not even the middle of december yet um and in that regard uh, keith's role is going to change ever so slightly so he he will be responsible for all development across the um, men's and women's uh, game in Sussex uh, look after the, the whole of the pathway for boys and girls all of our partnerships around our schools and our Oxfordshire relationship um, and making sure that we're feeding the right quality of players that we have done we feel we've done a pretty good job over the last few years of feeding players in um, and we just need to now finish that off um, over the next few years and we feel that Paul's the right man to do that and, and looking forward to, to getting started. So that's just a, a summary really from where, where we are as a, as a club. Um, very excited with where the club is at as well in terms of the development of the ground, um, our financial position and all the things that I've talked about over the last two or three years. It's not been an easy two or three years, but um, we're in a really strong and exciting position to move forward. I'll leave it there and throw it to you, Paul. Thank you very much. Well, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the word I think that I've had in my head for the last um, few days is opportunity. Um, and I see this as a brilliant opportunity for everybody. Um, I, I'm really delighted to be here. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. It's a fantastic opportunity for me, but I think it's a fantastic opportunity for everyone that's going to be involved. So I'm actually quite nervous, which suggests that it, it's absolutely the right thing. Um, and I, I'm nervous in lots of ways because of the, I guess there's a, an anticipation around when you've got so many talented young players, there is a nervousness about are you going to look after them properly? Are you going to give them the best? help and support um, and are we going to be able to, uh, to get the best out of them? Well, that, that's the exciting bit. So there's a nervous excitement from my point of view. And I think if you take something new on and you're, you're nervous and you're excited about it, that's a great start. Um, you know, I'm, not, I'm certainly not turning up here thinking I've got all the answers, I know how to do everything because I don't. It's a constant learning for me and it will be every single day. Um, you know, I, I think I've still got a lot of passion, energy and excitement for the game of cricket. I know I have. Um, and, you know, I, I think in, in terms of where this club is at at the moment, um, it's a fantastic opportunity to be involved um, and work with Rob and everybody else here to drive towards success. And I will make no 
apology for talking about winning at every given opportunity that I can because I haven't come here to continually help and develop a group of talented young players. I've come here to win. I want to be part of a winning team. Um, I love winning. I hate losing. Um, and you know, I will constantly talk about um, team winning. So it's easy to talk about competing. It's easy to talk about development. It's easy to talk about young players and make excuses and sort of hide behind, you know, they're going to need time, all that sort of stuff. There was enough ability in this squad to start challenging to win games of cricket and win trophies. And, and that's what we're here for. You know, we are, we're, it's a, a sporting organisation that knows how to win. Um, and, you know, as I say, my aims will be very much to talk about winning and trying to help this team get into position to win more trophies for this club. So, you know, as I say, really excited, really delighted with a hint of nervousness because there's a huge responsibility that goes with the role. Brilliant. So Good. Anyone, go first? Uh, a question for Paul Allroy, but what, what's happening with, with backroom staff? You have James Kirtley and, and Grant Powell working with batting the bowling coaches. Is that going to stay the same or are you bringing in your own people, Paul? No, they're, they're very much um, you know, part of this project. So I've spent the last two weeks with Grant in UAE working with the same team in the T10. Um, you know, I, I think there's the conversations that I've had with players is, is James and Grant are held you know, very highly in high regard by the players. Um, so it's the same really, I, I think for players and coaches, we, we've all got an opportunity. We've all got a chance to show that we really want to be here and we really want to work hard for the good of this team and for the good of the club. So every decision that we make from here on in is for the good of the team and good of the club. It's not for the good of me or anybody else. So that, that they're I mean, Grant is an unbelievably hard worker. Um, you know, if you want someone to work with a high quality group of potential young batters, I don't think there are too many better in the world than Grant to continue the development and hard work. You know, he's, um, he's very passionate, he's very driven. Um, he doesn't suffer fools um, and he works incredibly hard. I mean, you know, if you, could, if you asked him to come and throw at four in the morning, he'd be there like a shot because that, that's his passion for the game. So, you know, and James is obviously someone who's got a lot of experience at this club, a lot of successful experience at this club, um, and he'll be a great help as well. So, you know, I think, you know, the plan definitely is to keep that coach, coaching group together and, and try and help them to keep developing their route as well. As I said, I'm, you know, I want to learn every day, and if they do as well, which I'm sure they do, then it would be a good group working together. What's the main aspirations for the role? Is it just to win simply or is it to change the culture of the club at the moment? What's the main aspirations for you for the role? Well, the winning is the first thing. That, that's, what, that's what we're here for, is to win trophies, win games of cricket, win trophies. I, I, I have three things which you know, I, I've talked about and I, I tell people I'm quite boring really because I, I say the same things over and over again. Developing the spine of homegrown players developing players to play for England at all levels and winning trophies for your club and members. That's what we're here for. And within that, you, you, of course, you're going to change the way you do things. Some things might be done really well at the moment. There'll be others that we, we'll need to change and improve. I, I've always worked to having, a, you have a vision of how you want to play and how you want your team to play and how you want your team to behave. And you can't always do that from the start because either you might not have the quality or you might not have the certain players, whatever it might be. But the, the vision that you have in your head and the way that you want your team to play, you don't ever lose that. So I have this vision in my head of playing really positive, exciting cricket, but at the end of it, you, you win more games than you lose. Um, so to, to get to a winning environment, you, you need everybody on board. So the vision will need to be shared around the club. You know, you want everybody involved in that vision. You want everybody excited when they come through the gate in the morning that they're part of something that's really special. And, and I, I think we have the potential here to be really special. But if we just talk about, you know, we're going to do okay and we're going to compete and we're going to try and, you know, finish half up the table, that's not very inspirational. I, I wouldn't be very inspired if I came into the ground every morning and, you know, people in our positions were talking about, oh, we're going to do okay, we're going we're to compete. You know, I, I, gen I am genuinely excited by what we can achieve here. And the sooner we can start winning games and challenging for trophies, the better. 
Um, and I'm not saying we're going to win all three trophies this year, but the one thing we will be trying to do is to win all three trophies this year. It won't be a case of just, you know, as I say, hoping we do okay. If you, if you hope to do something, you're probably not going to do it. If you expect to do something, I reckon you've got a chance of doing it. So it will be about the language we use around everybody. And as I say, every person in this room that has a, a role here at the club will have a responsibility to help the team win on the field. Um, and so, yeah, winning is, is the goal. That's what we're here for. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Can you just tell us a bit about how taking this role came about? And, and sort of was, it, was it kind of as, as, as late a run as it seems for the job? Does that make sense? So, again, was it a... As late a run as it seems for the job? I don't know whether you were sort of whether you initially applied or, or, or whatever after the advertisement for that? How did it come about? Well, one, once I put my name into that and applied, I went through the process the same as everybody else. I went through an interview and, and I, I said earlier, you know, I'm a bit nervous now. I, I, I was ne when I came to actually have the interview, I was actually really nervous. And I spent a lot of time prepping for the interview um, because it was something I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm fortunate enough in the last... A um, couple of months to have had some conversations with various organisations. You know, the franchise world is, is quite an exciting world, but the idea of really getting stuck into a project um, is a thing that really, really appealed to me. You know, franchise cricket, as I say, we've just been at the T10, you, you bring a group of talented players together, you get two weeks, you try and win, and you, you all shake hands at the end and you move on. Um, that for me isn't a, a project, it's, it's a, a great part of something to be part of, and obviously the way the world of cricket is moving but from this um, opportunity one, as I say once I got the, um, the opportunity to have a, um, an interview from there on in it's, it's been fully part of the, the process that I think others have been through so I mean you know my view is that um, as I say a, a nervous interview suggests I really wanted to do the job so that's where I got to this stage. Say again a bit. There are loads of promising young players here. Yeah. Some of them performing well already at county level, but they're in the lines and things like that. Are there specific players who you've looked at and you've, you know, you've been working in county cricket and you've looked at and thought, God, that this is, this is a, a, a really good crop of players? Yeah. yeah. The, one you to the, the, the game at um, Edgebaston last year, we played a 50 over game at Edgebaston, um, which was a fantastic game of cricket, and then 600 runs scored. Um, and sitting watching some of the Sussex batters play um, w was, was quite exciting. Um, there was a bloke called Pajara, a little bit more experienced, who actually uh, he played exceptionally well. I nearly got the team over the line. But the, the, I think there is a real talented group of young players. Um, you know, you in UAE, you saw um, players there being involved in the, in the Lions game, obviously the senior side as well. Um, UAE at the moment, the under-19s, the young Lions are there with young Sussex players in that team. I mean, as I said, I am boring. The bit about developing homegrown spine and developing players to play for England at all levels. I mean, this club is as well set as anybody, any other team in the country in first class cricket with the amount of young players that are involved in young Lions, Lions and senior team. Um, you know, it, it's fantastic. So it's then a case of making sure you're backing the right ones um, giving the right ones the opportunity to play in all forms of the game and I think that's going to be really important as well that we don't we don't pigeonhole people because it's really easy for young players to pigeonhole them and say are oh, they a white ball player they're a red ball player they're not they're cricketers and I think the more cricket they play in various forms the quicker it is to help them learn and to develop um, so you know from that point of view I think there is a really exciting group of talented cricketers we've just got to make sure that we get the right senior players around them and the right overseas players around them as well because they're vital. I mean, pl players learn from players. They don't learn from coaches. Our job is to facilitate the learning. So if you have the really good senior players around your youngsters, you will grow their development even quicker. So yeah, I think the, the, the potential is huge. Because at the Warwickshire, you were director of cricket. Most of your other roles have been as a coach or an assistant or a coach. Yep. Does the combination of that kind of suit and tracksuit job kind of does having a full remit, if you like, was that particularly what attracted you to this role? Massively. So the, the opportunity to, as I say, and project and really get your teeth into something is, is the bit that really excites me. So to have, to be able to share responsibility for 
really driving the club forward is huge. And, and to be able to put everything together, I, I think of, of um, the rewards for all of us at the end of this could be massive. They could be absolutely huge. Could be really exciting and really rewarding for all of us that have got a job to play. And it's not just about me, it's about a whole group of us. I say everybody that's here at the club will have a role to play in it. But the idea of combining the two you know, I, I've said many times before, it took me two years to work out what a director of cricket did. Um, so the last two years, I think I started to be reasonably good at it. Um, but coaching has always been my passion. You know, being around the, the changing room, being around players, helping players to develop, dining room conversations, cup of coffee conversations in the morning. You, you, you don't always do your best coaching in the net. Sometimes you do it sat watching a game. And, and being around players is, is where I want to be. I, as I, say, I want to help people improve and get better and if players have got a desire to improve and get better then fantastic um, so yeah I, I think the combination of the two really it, it fits nicely and I think I've got enough experience now to to do that and to do that well hopefully and, and Rob results have been difficult but last year everything that we going on I suppose and then in first class cricket for the last three years particularly do you, do you see the appointment of Paul and the joining up of the kind of whole cricket operation under him being that turning point, and this is when you will start to see results from this young group. I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, look, it, it's <coughs> if it was easy doing this stuff, you know, it, everybody would be doing it. Um, you, you're absolutely right. It, it, you know, we've had a challenging few years for for lots of reasons, um, but I think we've we've always felt that the decisions that we took were the right decisions for the club in the long term, both financially and just trying to shift towards a group of what we felt were very talented young players. Now we've probably accelerated that a bit quicker than you, you would normally do in the circumstances when you're playing 16 year olds in the championship two years ago, which we did, albeit you know, James Coles and Dan Ibrahim scored the youngest 50 in the history of county championship cricket at Headingley as a 16 year old. So, you know, there, there's there's a bit of talent there, so we we did take a calculated decision, deliberately. Uh, partly, as I keep saying, and I will, I'm very boring about this as well in terms of um, protecting the long-term future of the club. Um, and it's been, I think, people sometimes forget that how difficult the last three years have been. Um, but we saw an opportunity and you I hadn't realized Paul was going to use that word so much but we saw an opportunity a couple of years ago to go do you know what we can protect the club financially uh, which we're doing on and off the field and we can fast forward some of these kids yes take a bit of a risk um, and hopefully not damage them in the process and I don't think we've done that um, to get to a place where we can build something really special uh, with a group of players who've grown up together and that's the bit that we all know about creating teams um, and everybody's worked hard under difficult circumstances over the last couple of years to get us to this point um, and we just felt now was the right time to to get to this position with a head coach in charge taking this this club forward uh, over the next few years um, so yeah, I, you know, it has been tough. We, I've acknowledged that all the way through. Um, but, but I think the excitement that we can now build going forward, um, I hope people can see that, and people that have watched some of these youngsters play, not forgetting, as you know, we've also got Jofra and Ollie, and Tom Haynes and Jack who are in the Lions, and four youngsters in the in the Young Lions. Um, that's great, but you know, we've got a transfer that back out here um, hopefully have a little bit more luck with injury as well which uh, you couldn't really make that up last season either um, and, and have real competition for places at, at this point on that journey that you're on since those decisions two or three years ago what, what's your kind of message to, to fans and, and all those people kind of around the club who are you know, watching on not quite as close to it as, as, as you guys are what's your message to them on that, on that journey um, be positive if you're real fans of this club. Well, just sort of picking up on your last answer there, as you look
look back at the last two or three years, which obviously have presented a lot of challenges, um, you know, COVID, senior players, even that you sort of spoke about make, you know, feeling like you've made the right decisions at the time. Do you sort of reflect on that period and, and sort of stick, stick by all those decisions? Do you think there were some mistakes along the way? How do you sort of look back at you know, what, what you said has been quite a tough period for the club? Um. No, you always reflect on that in, in, in life, in sport, you reflect on all sorts of things, decisions that you made. Yeah, I think fundamentally we did the right thing for this club uh, long term. Um, yeah, you can always reflect on individual decisions and I'm, I'm not going to do that specifically. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm, we, we've, we've also moved, and Paul touched on it, you know, we, we were slightly drifting towards a red ball, white ball split, which was partly just happened because of the nature of the players that were here and the decisions that some of those players took themselves to retire from red ball cricket, but we didn't want to lose them. And that sort of, you know, in a sense, that's starting to play out as well. So there's also an opportunity here with the next generation, you know, to play all formats and to actually see them develop across all formats, which a, they want to do, all the young players want to play all formats um, and, and pull that one group together under one head coach across all formats, which in itself is, is a pretty challenging job, quite frankly. The English summer is not exactly easy from a scheduling point of view and, and we're not going to go there today on, on, on that debate. <laughs> um, you know, so and it is a challenge um, for coaches and players to, to piece all of that together. But I think you can see in the modern young cricketer they want to play all formats they don't want to be pigeonholed and then eventually their careers will, will take them where they are and we think we've got again a group of young players who are suited to to play all formats uh, under one head coach um, and you sort of you touched on the financial situation briefly did you sort of assess where the club is financially obviously it's quite a tough period over the last however many years for, for all professional sports teams yeah we're, we're in really really good solid financial position oh you know we made small profits over the last three years through covid our financial year has just finished and, and we we had a good 2022 um you can see what we're doing uh, in terms of off the field as well at the entrance to the ground we've done that through covid that's a huge development for the organization which will help solidify our finances as well as we as we move forward um, and obviously, you know, all organisations, sporting organisations are just the same as any other businesses. You have to manage through tough financial times as well. And you just see what's happened with Wasps and Worcester in, in, in rugby. And, you know, there'll be some challenges ahead, I think, for other sports teams or companies through the next 12, 24 months. Uh, you know, it's not going to be an easy period. So we have, you know, in some ways, I'm even more pleased that we made the decisions we did two or three years ago, knowing what we now know that's happened and what we're likely to face. Um, and, and we're very, very positive about the future financially and, and this club and the history of this club. And even more positive about Paul sitting here and the group of coaches and players that we've got um, to be excited about. And that's what we want to be. We want everybody in the club to be excited. Um, there has had to be some patience over the last couple of years and uh, sports supporters don't necessarily have a huge amount of that. Um, but I think we can, you know, we can see a way forward and we saw the signs of it last year with, particularly with the batting. Most of the bowlers were sat watching, which was not the best place to be um, injured and hopefully they won't be next summer and, and we, can, we can take that forward as well. Um, and Paul, in terms of the, the squad, um, how do you sort of assess where it stands at the moment? Do you feel like you need to add maybe a senior player or two? Presumably you're going to try and recruit an overseas or for, for the blast. Um, how do you sort of assess your work over the next however long from a recruitment side? Well, I think, I mentioned earlier, you, around every successful team, um, your, your senior players play a key role. And I think that the danger of having lots of good young players is that you know that they, they know they're playing um, and that there isn't maybe the battle to get into the team and they haven't got the senior players around them to to help them and support them 
and, and therefore they've been really reliant on the coaches to do that. And, in, and I mentioned earlier, you know, James is someone who has been part of success. He knows what success looks like, but he will also admit to the time that when he started playing, there were good senior players around him. And, and as I said, players learn from players. You know, there's no getting away from that. So we, I think in Pajara, you know, an outstanding bloke in your team, fantastic person, and obviously an outstanding cricketer. And, and it's important that you have other senior players who play that role. So in Ravi and Finney, they're two people who are going to have to be, you know, as they are, enthusiastic blokes who stand up and lead on the field. And it's been tough for Finney that he hasn't played as much cricket as he'd like to have done. But a you know, great bloke who gets the game, knows the game. So we want him on the field performing well. Um, and it may be that um, we might have to add one or two just in the short term. But ideally, you don't want to be blocking the path of youngsters. And that's, that's the other real challenge, that when you have talented young players, you have to back the right ones and you have to create the opportunity for them to have the key role in the side that they need to develop and get better and better. But you do need good senior players around them. So I, I think once I've had conversations with the coaches about where we're at as a group, um, then we can work out what we need to help and support them. But you know, players do need help from from senior players, there's no question about that. But they've got to be the right ones, they've got to be the right characters, as opposed to just people who come in and score you runs and take wickets. They've got to be the right person around your team as well. Um, and, and then different counties have kind of gone different ways in the past couple of years of what they do in the well, hundreds on, um, whether the coach goes and works in the system or stays with the 50 over team. What's the plan for that or is that still to be discussed? From my point of view, yeah. very much involved with the 50 over team. Yeah, I, 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 the last two years um, of 50 over cricket has been a brilliant opportunity to get good young players in, um, into your team and play well. And I mentioned earlier the, the sussex Warwickshire game. I, I, I've said that that was probably winning the championship two years ago was, was great. That's fantastic. That's for the members. But for me, my personal highlight at Warwickshire in the four years was seeing the, the game against Sussex, our two opening batters walking out to bat at Edgbaston in that game. One who had come through our academy public school system, the other one inner city kid, state school, come through our academy, 16 and 21, opening the bat in that game. That for me was the absolute highlight of my four years. Um, and I could have got in my cart, caught past it over that morning and gone home quite happy. Um, the, the result w w was fantastic to win the game, but having young players in your team and playing well was really exciting. So that 50 over competition, it gets a lot of stick. I, I think it's a brilliant competition for developing players. Um, if other coaches within our system get opportunities to work in the 100, happy days, go and do it. Because that's, it, you, you want your coaches to go and you know, be part of something that's, that's fantastic and, and help their learning as well. But for me this year, will very much be about being involved in the 50 over tournament, definitely. And, and when you say other opportunities, presumably that's how you're sort of balancing yeah, look, I, I mean, you know, the, the, the best example of that is the England cricket team 2015. Once we started to win in one day cricket, once we started to win games and play good cricket, more and more of the players got opportunity to go and play franchise cricket around the world. And what they did, they brought back great, op great learning from what they'd learned. And we shared that amongst the team and it helped us to become an even better team. Um, and that definitely helped England to win the World Cup. You know, when you've got Mo and Ali going off to play with Virat Kohli, you had Josh Butler going off to spending time with people like Ponting, where he was playing, and they were all going off and learning. And, and I, you know, I, I want us to get to a stage where we've got players away, as we've already said, you know, playing in the young Lions and the Lions and the senior team. If players are getting picked up to go and do franchise cricket as well, analysts has just been working the T10 as well. You know, you, you want your staff across the board to be going and experiencing different things, other high performing environments that are winning and they bring that learning back as part of the pot. That's got to be good for everybody. You know, the more, the more experiences that you're open to as a, you know, whether it's a coach, an SSC, physio, player, whatever it might be, and you bring that learning back and share it in the pot, then that's a great place to be. And, and there was a time when players went off to play maybe in England squads and didn't come back and talk about what they were learning because they were nervous of upsetting the coaches in their county setup. That's gone now. 
you know, go and learn as much as you can, bring it back and share it and let's help us all to be better and improve. Okay. I have only ever offered any groundsman I've worked with um, two bits of advice. Um, one is produce the best wicket you can, and two, make sure the defensive nicks carry to slip. Um, and the thing that, when we won the championship at Warwickshire, um, we won it playing on the best pitches in the country, and we did exactly that. We played on wickets that were the best, and nicks carried to slip. And if you do that, your batters are in the game because there's bounce in the pitch, your bowlers are in the game, even if it's not moving sideways, you, the best way to get um, the best batters out is to get that little bit of extra bounce. And if you can get extra bounce because the wicket bounces, you've got a chance. And if we're serious about developing players to play for England, then we want them to play on the best pitches. If we, if we play on wickets that are the colour they are at the moment and it nips all over the place and the game's finished in two days, yeah, you might win a few games, but that's a short-term goal for me. So I, Definitely. Best pitches. I, I don't know how to prepare a pitch. I have no idea about how to prepare a pitch. I know where the stumps go and the lines are, but the bit in between is down to the skill of the groundsman. And as I say, best pitch you can produce, and if you can get defensive nicks carrying to slip, it produces a great game. And that way, you, you win playing on good pitches, and your players learn then to play on good pitches when they come to international cricket. Because we've seen many times, if you shortcut that, and then you go and play international cricket, it's amazing how quickly you come unstuck. Sides who have got sides in a hundred, etc. Yep. Yeah, people think, yeah, you know, I want to play cricket. Well, selling them the dream, and and that and that's the you know the dream I have, and the as I said, the image I have in my head is winning trophies and players playing for England at all levels. And and you don't need to go to um, a perceived bigger or first division club or whatever it might be to play international cricket. England have shown they'll select players that are playing well with the right character, whichever team you're playing at. And as I say, this, team, this club is littered with players who are playing at all levels. So you don't need to go elsewhere. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, as I mentioned earlier, it, we, if we have a dream of winning trophies and being a really successful club and a successful team on and off the field, then you know, my job, along with Rob and everyone else in here, is to convince everybody that this is a dream worth investing into and buying into. And as I say, I, I, I've only come here because I want to win and I'm, I'm desperate to win. I want to win trophies um, and I want to see players improve and get better and that will be my job to make sure that I convince everyone that this is what we're aiming towards and the more people that you get to buy into that, the more chance you've got of players actually thinking, cracky, this is the place I want to be. You know, we, we've got excellent coaches, you've got brilliant facilities, you've got great net facilities, um, indoor with the gym and everything else, you know, not every team has that. So th there's a lot of great facilities here, but if you can link everyone together and make everyone really feel that there is something special happening, I want to be part of that, then that's the easiest way to convince any player. But obviously, the other aspect is that they want to be playing in the team, don't they? We want to get to a point where you, know, you, you have players who that they're playing brilliantly, they can't get into your team. And, and you're almost a bit like the academy's done. You know, you're overperforming in terms of the amount of players coming through. Um, and sometimes your best academy is when you can't get them all in your team and they have to go off and play elsewhere. That's when you know your academy's working well. And I think from a performance point of view, we want to get to a point where we're winning and people are absolutely desperate to get into that team. And when you get to that stage, hopefully you're, you're selling the right dream in the right way to them.